A set is a collection of objects. The members of the set, or the objects, are called its elements. We can specify a set in at least two different ways. First, roster notation is basically just a list of the elements. We enclose the elements in curly braces to denote a set and separate the elements using commas. For example, a set of the first four counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4, written in roster notation like this. Now some of you will say, well, I can't make curly braces. And if that's a problem for you, then I don't mind if you just use a squiggly line. So if you just want to write something like this, then that would be okay. But you should not use parentheses to denote a set because in math we use parentheses for other purposes. Some other examples of sets in roster notation. The three colors red, white, and blue. Two popular pets dog and cat, and a list of all the counting numbers starting with one and continuing on indefinitely. Of course we cannot write an indefinite number of elements and so we do in a case like this is to write a few elements until a pattern is established and then we write three dots to indicate the pattern continues. The second way that we can indicate a set is to give a description of a typical element, and this is known as set builder notation. So for example, we have a set of animals which are carnivorous, meaning they eat meat. Now, we might not know every carnivorous animal out there. Nevertheless, we can still specify the set using set builder notation in this way. We give typical element, x, for example, and then give that characteristic of that element, which will determine whether that uh, object is in the set or not. So if the animal is carnivorous, we know it's in the set. Now just because you give a characteristic does not necessarily mean that we've specified a set properly. That characteristic must be specific enough so that we can tell when, whether any given object is in the set or not. And if we can do that, if we can say for any object, whether that object is in the set, then we say the set is well defined. For example, we have a set of actors, A, and we'll say that for each of these actors, they've won an Academy Award. Again, we might not know every actor who has won an Academy Award, but we could check that by looking it up for any in given individual. Therefore, this characteristic is specific enough to say that the set is well defined. On the other hand, if we were to say a set of people who are tall, this is not specific enough because what is tall in one context may not be considered tall in another context. Okay, so for example, uh, six feet might be considered tall for an average woman, 
but would not be considered tall if we were talking about NBA players. Okay, now there are a couple of special sets that will have special designations. And the first one that we want to think about is a set that contains no element. That's referred to as the empty set. And there are two ways to specify the empty set. One way is simply to draw the curly braces with no element listed inside. Another way is to write the symbol zero with a line through it. That is recognized by mathematicians to designate the empty set. Another special set that we will have use for is known as the universal set. The universal set is a set of elements uh, which is the entire set of elements um, under consideration in a given problem. And we usually designate the universal set with the letter U. Now to indicate that some object A is an element of the given set, we use this symbol here. And this symbol is read as is an element of. Okay, so if we have an object A in a set S, then we would read that as A is an element of S. On the other hand, if we were wanted to say that that element is not in the set, then we simply draw a line through that special symbol and read as A is not an element of S. So for example, we have the set consisting of the numbers 2, 3, 4, and 5. 3 is clearly an element of that set. 5 is also clearly an element of, of that set. On the other hand, 6 is not an element of that set. Just a few more examples of sets. In set builder notation, we could let the letter P represent the set of all planets. Uh, we could write out P as a uh, set specified in roster notation simply by giving the name of each of the planets. Okay, we've already looked at this set here. Well, the set N consisting of all the counting numbers. In this case, of course, we cannot list all the elements of this set. We've talked about the empty set. This set here, set X, is a set which actually consists of elements which are themselves sets. So in this case, the elements of X are three sets. The set consisting of 1, 2, 3, the set consisting of 1, 4, 5, and the set consisting of the element 3. Okay, one other concept for this lecture, and that is the cardinal number of a set. Cardinal number is denoted by the symbol here, n. Think of n as representing the number of elements in the set. Okay, in order to get the, count, the cardinal number, we simply count up the elements in the set. Okay, for the uh, sets given in the previous example, we have for the cardinal numbers, uh, P has cardinal number 8. The number of uh, elements in the set of all counting numbers is infinite, so we cannot give a number for that. The number of elements in the empty set is 0. 
and the number of elements in our set X is 3 because there are three sets in, contained in that set. 